lethargic in the last couple of weeks. Started off exercising a lot. I'm now playing more video games called Duty Modern Warfare Warzone. Um, I don't know if you can hear that, but that is the sound of my day today. Which is Call of Duty. <laughs> uh, no, unfortunately, I haven't been playing that a lot. So, my day today is pretty bleak compared to what that was supposed to be. Nowadays, I just spend my time smoking weed, eating, playing Call of Duty, which is nice. You know, um, in the world of. Uh, God, I've just been smoking myself absolutely stupid. Cooked loads of cannabis. Out. So staying cold in the time. It's just a very exclusively human experience of the world. It's not like I've not done by any other creature on this planet. They're not worrying about what they should and could do. They're just doing the bees and bees. Just being and doing. We got the fucking just the PS2 getting smashed in, left, right, and centre. Churning out bars, like no man's business. Now exploring different avenues of my creativity. Kind of ranging from storytelling to costume making, puppet making, and machine making, and collaging. Pretty chill so far. I'm not. I'm not ready to go back to the real world yet. It's quite nice to not do anything, really. She's just got to hold back that guilt that you feel for not doing anything. Great today, this really good, good poem by a mate of mine. That was actually, I was like, do you know, that was actually spot on. And it was just about the, about the kinds of shoulds, shoulds and coulds. Um, which I guess we all experience is like, kind of like, uh, like, mm, scratchy like gnawing thing in the back of your head like oh no, you should be doing this could be doing that could be making something of yourself you know the kind of whole like yeah I'm trying to feel grateful for this moment because it's very unique and I want to try and appreciate it as I much as I can I do wish I talk to more um, people there but I'm also definitely very reclused it's interesting times like these they're kind of Give you time it's a really to amazing moment to be able to reflect, reflect. and reconsider um, actually what you want in life stuff suddenly becomes and apparent what's like where you're at it. sounds mad but I'm actually really busy doing all this delivery driving um, driving all over London delivering food for the restaurant but also delivering food packages and prepaid like MasterCards for asylum seekers and people that have been like, made destitute by the immigration process. Um, I guess the weirdest thing about it is that these people are all living in the same areas of London. I'm getting to know like a street. And on one end, there's like a family that orders like 50 quid's worth of food on a Friday or Saturday night. And then at the other end, there's somebody who's living off like donation food. Cans of beans and that kind of shit. Um, I guess it's a beautiful thing about London that rich and poor live side by side. But it really amplifies the difference and the different ways this sort of situation affects people um, yeah other than that kind of fucking glad it's raining getting a bit sick of the fucking sunshine <laughs> at last 
Um, I hope you're well. And I hope you're good staying inside with Milo all the time and not killing you. Go the other way around. And uh, that's my mum. Hello Finn, I'm leaving you a voice note as requested. Um, quarantine is currently fine. A lot of backlog of things I want to get done, so it's alright. Do a little bit of that while we're staring into the abyss. Um, the inviting, enticing abyss of various walls and textures of the room around me. One thinks if you could stare long enough into the abyss, the answers might be there. But, um, I am extremely grateful for the time of rest and reevaluation that I hope to be having now, although I'm sure I'll get bored, very bored in the next coming weeks. Are you okay otherwise, Johanna? Are you, are you in good shape? Yeah, I mean, yeah, my biggest news is that yeah, I've started going on these runs, which has sort of been yeah. approved by the CF team. So I went on one this morning, and it's so nice for me. Like, it really, I honestly, I've never before as intensely, like, felt the endorphin rush <laughs> as you do. When I finish the run, like, I honestly can feel it, like, this sort of sense of well-being just, like, wash over me. Yeah. And that's, like, I've right never... I've honestly, like, you know, people are like, oh, yeah, like, I want to run with my mental health, really. Like, I've never really felt that as, as strongly yeah. as I have now, but it's so important to me. <laughs> so that's nice. And, um... It's just, yeah, my and for all your stuff, it's quite a long way until you are actually in the past. But I know, but it's still fine, it's like not a main road. And the view, yeah, you can okay. see right into London, so it's on a hill. We're on a hill, so you get a good view down to the city and you see all the buildings. It's so weird, like me and Juice both woke up at five in the morning and I was like, oh, Juice, should we just go out? And it was like the most special, one of the most special moments maybe ever <laughs> for me and Drew because we both, we had the window open and we both woke up because the birds were so loud this morning chorus. <laughs> 
And then I just turned to her and I was like, should we just go out? Because I hadn't been out yet. I've not, I had not dared. You know, technically I, I'm not allowed to. But it's five in the morning, the sun hadn't risen yet. And so, you know, we were like, oh, there won't be anyone, anyone there. So we got up yeah. and, and like went out and did this walk to the park. And um, it was like really pink. Just free sunrise, hazy. All the lights in the city were still twinkling. And we just sort of walked and like sort of quietly spoke together. And it was just really special. Like, it was just really, really special. And it was all dewy and a bit cold. And, and then we got to the park yeah. and there was this couple in the park and they were like an older couple. Um, oh, really? And they obviously had done the same thing because they were older and they probably couldn't get out either, uh, you know, in the day because they didn't want to see anyone. And they were stood under this huge chestnut tree and they were faced, they were like on either side of the trunk facing out of the chestnut tree and they brought a little speaker and they were just listening to this music and just like standing and like obviously kind of meditating or something out, out of this tree and it was just so like special to see it and like be in the same space really because that's kind of what me and Drew were doing as well because like kind of taking in like I don't know, nature <laughs> but yeah